I wanted to bring this series back to life, seeing as there are a few things that I believe could really be expanded upon through this series in general. There are a few things that I'm thinking about that could definitely act as great discussion pieces for this series, and I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to have a lot of suggestions as well, so if you have any of those, leave them in the comments, I'd be glad to consider them for this series. This is Vancouver Canucks What If, where we take a look into the past and discuss what if something that we're discussing did or did not happen. In the previous cases, we've talked about what if Roberto Luongo started over Eddie Lack at the Heritage Classic. What if Aaron Rome never did that thing in Game 3, which we shall not talk about. What if the Canucks never drafted Jake Vertanen? Things like that. In this video, we're going to be asking the question, what if the Vancouver Canucks never signed Ryan Miller? Miller is definitely the best goaltender we've had post Luongo. You can say it was Eddie Lack, you could say Markstrom, but let's face it, nobody's saying Markstrom, and Eddie Lack was hot at times, but overall, as a complete package of a goaltender, you'd probably say Miller was better. Just for some backstory, the Vancouver Canucks traded Roberto Luongo near the end of the 2014 season. And going into 2014-15, we wanted a veteran goaltender. So we signed former Vesna winning Olympic silver medalist Ryan Miller to a three-year contract. And as he played his contract out, he would battle Eddie Lack, Jacob Markstrom at times, mostly Eddie Lack, for starting positions and the ability to start in the playoffs, per se. A lot of Vancouver Canucks fans started thinking about, hey, Miller's pretty good for us. But Eddie Lack is pretty good for us too, which one's better? And throughout the years, people started seeing more value in guys like Miller and guys like Lack. Miller was definitely the best player on the ice for the Canucks on some nights. And there are definitely moments where the Canucks probably should have lost a few games, but didn't because of some fantastic goaltending from both Lack and Miller. But going forward, Miller was a guy who definitely did have a good run with the Canucks. I'm going to say that. He played... 150 games with the Vancouver Canucks, 64 wins and 68 losses, with 16 overtime shootout losses as well. Of course, that's negative, that's not really that good, but at the same time, if you were living through these years as a Canucks fan watching this go down, you'd understand that he was honestly good, and Miller was definitely one of the better Canucks players that we've had. In Miller's first season with the Vancouver Canucks, 14-15, this is when we made the playoffs, he played 45 games, and he won 29 of them. 15 of his games were lost, and one of them was a shootout or overtime loss. Miller in his first year was legitimately good, and the rest of the team was legitimately good as well. The Sedins and Verbada and all that, Bo Horvat's rookie year, making the playoffs and losing in the first round, Miller actually not even playing the majority of the playoffs, seeing as Eddie Lack started a few of those games. But going into 15-16 and 16-17, Miller was definitely negative. 35 total wins and 68 total losses from the last two years of his deal. And it's incredible because a lot of Vancouver Canucks fans throughout those two years would definitely say that Miller stole us the victory on some of those nights. And I remember a lot of people in particular during this span of time, me included, we would all talk about how Miller legitimately gave us the chance to win. The only reason we got to overtime, or the only reason we snuck away with a one-goal lead was because Miller was on his game. And by the time Miller was done with the Canucks, I was sitting here thinking, yeah, no, he was good. He had a good run with us. And I remember at the beginning of a few of these seasons, people would talk about, oh yeah, the Canucks goaltending tandem is bad, uh, Markstrom, Lack, and Miller. Miller was legitimately good. And there were some nights where he did let in a few because he's playing in front of the Vancouver Canucks, but... There were other nights where he totally stole the show, and I think anybody who's denying that didn't have a good enough sample size of watching the games, because Miller, in general, throughout his three years for the Vancouver Canucks, was good. Despite what the numbers say, despite his win-loss record and what have you, he was a good goaltender. And so that's why, if the Vancouver Canucks did not sign Ryan Miller, I think we would be much further into our rebuild, into Team Tank. Who knows? Because when Ryan Miller stepped into the Vancouver Canucks in his first year, we finished in the playoffs, and we grabbed Brock Besser in the draft. Good draft pick? Heck yes. In Ryan Miller's second year, 15-16, the Vancouver Canucks finished second last in the Pacific Division, and we drafted fifth overall. We drafted Ole Olevi. 
my hypothesis here is if the Vancouver Canucks did not have Ryan Miller for 15-16, if we didn't sign him, we went with Locke and Markstrom, if we were only with Locke and Markstrom for these years, we would have had a better draft pick and we would have been further into our rebuild. Instead of Oli Levy, let's say we grab a Paul Uyarvi or a Laine or a Pierre-Luc Dubois. How much would those guys be helping our team out today rather than an Oli Levy? And I don't want to give up on your Levy. I'm not saying that he's a bad player. I'm just saying that we would be further into the rebuild. Let's take a look at the most previous season after that, 16-17. Now, this season was kind of wonky because I honestly really liked how this one went. Ryan Miller was still a Vancouver Canuck for 16-17. He won 18 games and he lost 35 in total, but we finished in the draft lottery. We drafted fifth overall. We drafted Elias Pettersson. I'm honestly okay with that. But the result is, for me, had we not had Miller, even for any of those three years, we might not have made the playoffs in 2015, I'm not too sure about that. As a result, we probably would have drafted earlier. As a result, we might have still taken Brock Besser. Let's be real here, betting was really high on Besser, we probably would have taken him regardless. In 15-16, Miller gave us an opportunity to win on some nights, but of course we still weren't really that good. We would have been even worse without Miller, and we probably would have drafted a better player than Yolevi. A player that would probably be helping the team out today. And then in 1617, Miller, again, same story, he gave us a chance to win on some nights. We didn't win most of the time, but we were in a position where we drafted Elias Pettersson, which was great. But if Miller wasn't here, I think the whole culture of us needing to be competitive and needing to win would have been thrown out the window, and I think that we would have been able to embrace a rebuild full on. Because if our tandem of goaltending was Eddie Lack and Markstrom, which is, let's say, worse than Miller and whoever you'd want to put with Miller, we would have been in a position to say, yeah, no, we're really not going to win a few games here. Because Miller stole us some games, and Miller gave us the chance to win some games. So, had we had poorer goaltending in those years, I thoroughly believe we would have been in the position to make more trades and deals and signings that would have catered to the rebuild. Because we would have been in the position where we said, yeah, no, we're not really in a position to win right here. And I know it's a GM's position to say, always say, basically, we're in a position to win, we're going to win, we're going to win no matter what. But it's also something to acknowledge when a GM is being kind of delusional in thinking that their team has a chance to win, when in reality, it's obvious to see that they can't. Look at Louis Erickson. Do you think it would have been necessary to make a deal for Louis Erickson at the beginning of 1617 if there was virtually no visible chance of us being able to succeed? Because at the end of 2016, even though we did have a really bad season and we had a high draft pick, we still had foundational pieces that we thought allowed us to win. Miller was good. The Sedins, everyone thought they still had it in them. Verbata, Hamus, they left. So we made deals catering to the idea that we would be able to remain competitive. When a lot of other people looked at it and said, no, we can't do that. And Ryan Miller was a big part of that. I believe that he influenced the winning culture of the Vancouver Canucks greatly because he was pretty good. And the bottom line here is, had we not signed Miller, had we remained with Lack and or Markstrom for these three years, we would be in a better position today because we would have excelled in the rebound even further. I don't want to blame anything on Miller. He was doing his job. We signed him and he was good. That's great. But... Looking at things in hindsight, I'm not too sure if I could confidently say that I would sign him again. I know that we did make the playoffs, and I know that was all good and all, but we had no virtual chance of winning. We lost in the first round. And I acknowledge that Miller has been a fantastic goalie for the Canucks, and all the numbers, they're not really that good, but anybody who is watching Ryan Miller in his three years here would know that he was legitimately a good player. Even Markstrom was good at some times. As for Eddie Lack, he was hot at a really good selection of moments, but overall, I think that Miller was the best goaltender that we had post-Roberto Luongo. And so, I conclude here that had we not signed Miller, we would have been a worse team than we were for those three years. It's kind of difficult to think about because we were already pretty bad, but it's possible to have been even worse. And that's basically it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video here, Plus, and Dr. Joel, Gaming, and bye. <laughs>